Good afternoon. My name is Jay Rothman, and welcome to Real Man Real Talk Raw. It is a lunchtime edition, and I'm excited to have as my guest Jeff Fasano, an ex uh, Staten Island New Yorker. And uh, <laughs> I, I preference that, uh, Jeff, because I also am an ex New Yorker, having uh, grown up uh, my childhood in the New York metro area. So it's <laughs> It's pretty cool that you're, you're living in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm out in uh, the mountains of Scottsdale, Arizona, two transplants. And uh, I suspect life is very different for you today than, uh, than it was from the old days growing up in New York. Um, growing up on Staten Island, because I did a lot of growing up in, in Manhattan for 20 years. Um, but growing up on Staten Island uh, was wonderful. But uh, talk talk about for everybody out there who thinks they may be living small right now. Well, that's what I thought when I was 18 years old, living on Staten Island. That this is small, and there's a lot more out in the world than just this. Um, and, you know, that well, maybe that when I was 18 years old and said I need to go out and find some other place um, was my beginning of my journey of saying I don't want to live small anymore. Hmm. I understand that. And that, that definitely resonated with me. I always felt a draw to to leave the New York metro area. And and so I, I did just that as well. I've been on a, a journey of seeking uh, answers for myself. And uh, I'm now living in my ninth state over my adult life. Uh, although I do understand today that a lot of those moves perhaps were not coming from a healthy space, but just feeling like uh, irritable and discontent. And perhaps maybe if I make one more move, I'll start to feel better. And, you know, I carried all those, those uh, this, this feelings of discomfort and disease within me in boxes and luggage. It, it didn't stay behind. It, actually came with me and uh so they call that geographical move sometimes if, if it's uh, not for the right reason uh we don't always achieve the our goal that we that we set when we think it's a good idea to to pack up and leave a yeah. whole state but uh you know I, it's been about six months since i had you on the show and the last time you mm -hmm. came into the studio uh you had just uh you had just mourned the loss or beginning to mourn the loss of a dear friend of yours who had committed suicide yeah. uh, just a few days earlier. And um, I'm curious how you have been since the, the last time we did get together and uh, what's new in your life. But at the same time, what has the, the mourning process, the grieving process been like for you? And where are, where are you in that process today? Uh, well, I'll tell you what the, the first thing that, that pops into my head is um, the the grieving process. And I, it, it sometimes it doesn't end because I, I do think I'm of Peter every day. I do miss him every day. He was a beautiful, gentle soul that was wise beyond anything that he knew. Um, there are things um, that happen that come up in my life each day. Um, I've got something going on right now with a beloved pet who is um, ready to make his his transition, and um, I've been looking for somebody to speak to, and and, I, and Peter popped into my head. Um, he had a way of nurturing and 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 helping and and always saying um, the, the right thing. Um, that would just I would oh yeah I got it. And we had a beautiful connection. And I, I think of him often and I, and I miss him. But I, if, if we can look at everything as um, what is the gift, what is the lesson, when things pop up in our life um, as, as crazy as it may seem, um, as daunting as it may seem, one of the tools that I learned from my friend Brian Brennan back at Children of Light New York was um, stop, breathe, and ask the question, what is the gift and what is the lesson? It may not come right away, but if you could just throw that out there, it will, it will give you a different perspective because um, 
there is a gift and a lesson and everything and everything that happens is supposed to happen in our divine plan and the divine plan of everything. I digress. Um, my last conversation with Peter um, was a huge gift for me hmm. because his narrative at the time was what it was. And I remember after that conversation, it was as if that I was listening to me. And I said to myself, wow, that's the narrative that has been running through my head because it wasn't, in, it's not in my heart. That is the narrative that has been running through my head for a couple of years now. And I need to shift that in myself. And that has been my, my process um, from that last conversation um, with Peter. And that was one of the gifts that I said, wow, there is joy in this life. And we get into these blind spots where we look at our life and it just mounts and mounts and mounts and mounts. The ego takes over. Uh, and the wounded ego, the defended ego takes over and it puts us into this state of indulgence or sinking into what's going on in our life and we get caught there. And I've, I've been in that place and I'm sure everybody has been in that place from one time to the next, but I literally heard it on that like almost four hour telephone conversation that I had with Peter a couple of days before he, he took his own life. And I've been working on it ever since, I must say. I love what you, what you shared in this segment about behind every moment when we ask ourselves, what is the lesson and where is the growth? Because that takes retraining of our brain rewiring to get into the habit of doing that. It's, it's not a normal, let's say, um, place that most people typically go when we face a challenge, a painful one, or even a celebratory one. I, I had the opportunity to, to face, uh, I'd say, a, a, celeb a moment of celebration last Friday when I finally got a yes to an invite to come on my show um, with from Kelly Gores from the Hill documentary after I had been turned down a number of times. And for me, that was a moment of celebration. But I was able to immediately go to, and I let myself celebrate it for about 30 seconds. And then I went to what's the lesson and what's the growth from the last six months of inviting her and keep getting turned down or having kept getting turned down. And I went right to, really reflecting on the experience for me and how I navigated through it. And so even, it's not always, my point being, uh, Jeff, is it's, we don't always have to ask the question of what's the lesson and where's the growth, just when we're in a challenging moment or emotion or event. Uh, we, we can also look at it from when we're experiencing something very positive in our life, because mm -hmm. there's, there's lessons on both sides, you know, the darkness and the lightness. And once we get into the habit, once we, let's say, reprogram our thinking, our brains, our immediate re from reaction to responding, instead of going, uh, being tripped up into those emotional feelings of whatever they might be to go, what do we get to grow? What do we learn from this moment? Because from there, we then have the opportunity a lot of the time to get to, get to that space of gratitude, even when we're in pain, let's say mourning a loss of a friend or a loved one in death. Um, there's, there's always a gift or two that we can, we can pull from the experience. And, uh, and from there we could, instead of living in the darkness and the pain of the loss, we can, we, a lot of times can go to gratitude because we've, we've got, we learned, we are aware of what we had to learn through that moment. You know, what's cool. And, and I'm, I'm going to put my, counselor therapist hat on here for a second and let's shift from looking at what may be daunting in our life 
um, I'm, I'm a trans channel and I channel the energy of Archangel Michael. And the other day we brought, yesterday we, or two days ago, we brought in Michael for his monthly message. And he called Marth, March the month of beginning to open our hearts to receive love, to really receive love. And a lot of men have a, have a, have a challenge with that. A lot of people have a challenge with that. So what you just said, Jay, is that you just uh, got Kelly, you know, accepted your invitation to be on your show. Jay, I said it before we came on the air. You're an amazing guy. You have a beautiful heart. Your energy is light. You care. You, it, you're just a, you know, a guy that, you know, I want to know. So all of that wonderful stuff. When Kelly said yes. Where did you go and how did that make you feel? Because it was something that was fantastic that happened. And this is the antithesis of, oh man, this crap is happening. It's daunting. And this is, what's the gift? What's the lesson? And then, wow, how long do we stay in the moment when something wonderful happens to us? Do we really allow it to penetrate and do we allow it to receive it, allow us to receive it? And then do we allow ourselves to feel in that moment and say, let it, as Robert Baker, my, my mentor, my teacher, my therapist years ago was, did we allow it to land? I love that. Yeah, that's a great question. I love that, Jeff. So here's the short answer. Um, I. I allowed my, I'd say my, my inner child, JJ, to get on the top of the table, poolside, and have a little celebratory dance for about a minute. And then I went to reflection of what are the lessons, what did I learn about myself through this six month journey of uh, asking her to participate as my co-host and getting turned down, where the ego went with that initially always was rejection. And, um, and each time I, I walked my ego off the ledge and I came back to doing an ego vital check-in, which was what was my motive in the first place and making sure that my motive was coming from pure love and, and kindness and feeling that by having her as a co-host, we can perhaps um, inspire someone that needs to hear her message uh, begin their own healing journey of their own mind, body, and soul. So each time when I did that check in, I felt comfortable that my motive was coming from the healthy space, not from ego. But once I got the word that she was going to participate, I had that moment of let's enjoy this, this emotional feeling behind her saying yes. But the rest of the time, the rest of the evening, and I got that, at, I think, around 4 o'clock or so. The rest of that day, I just stayed in. I allowed myself to land and really focus and process on what it meant for me. Where was the growth over this, this timeline? It wasn't until Saturday morning when I woke up and I put my backpack on and I exited out to do my spiritual practice and hike that I then transitioned to from growth to um, the lesson into preparing mentally for the interview, which was then that same day, and really focusing on, again, managing ego versus my authentic self and figuring out, trying to understand who was going to really show up at that interview for me. You know, was it going to be ego that was going to show up and be present, or was I going to show up as my let's say my whole authentic self, mind, body, and soul. And so that's how I was able to process this. And just by explaining this process to you, for me, was it's growth. Because a lot of times, I remember years ago when I was selling and I was you know, really young in a business doing what I did for 37 years, as soon as I closed a sale, I typically wouldn't even take a moment to acknowledge it and it and really mm -hmm. reflect on the process of what it took to, to close the order. And I'd go right into the next opportunity. I, I wouldn't take time to celebrate 
the lesson behind the experience of closing the order. And I remember when I was managing uh, about 18, 20 sales reps um, later in my career, I would encourage them to make sure that they're taking time to pause and reflect on the whole process of that particular sale um, so that we can acknowledge it to ourselves. And we do take the time to, to get to gratitude, you know, because we're just so busy chasing, chasing whatever it is we're chasing that we don't, we're not taking the time to love ourselves. What we're chasing is the moment where dad or mom says, you're wonderful and you're loved. Mm. That's mm. what that's what what all of us are mm. chasing. Wow. So the reason why I asked you that question, and before we came on the on the air, we were talking about this because this is my one of my biggest challenges is to uh, be in the moment when something wonderful happens. Um, and that's why I'm asking you. So, like, so how did it make you feel in that moment? And then what does it say about you where you are doing this? Um, I, when you posted that on Facebook, I looked, I looked her up and she is actually somebody that I, it's hit me that really I would like to get to know her. So, um, thank you for that. She did that movie. So what is it? If we're always asked to look in the mirror, most of us construe that to be, I need to see what's wrong with me. I need to see what the challenge is. I need to see what I need to heal. Yeah, that's part of it. But then the mirror comes in this moment for you in many moments. I've had three moments like that this morning already. And in that moment, the mirror pops up into this wonderful woman saying, yes, Jay, I want to be a part of this and this and that. So what did that mirror show you? That wonderful moment, that woman said yes. What did that mirror show you where, where Jay is right now? Well, it, it, a, few, a, few, a few places. One is that um, my tenacity, and when I believe something, when I feel something is right coming from within today, I don't give up. I, I stay with it. Um, it's no different than when the doctor has told me uh, I had a diagnosis and then on the back, the flip side of that comes the prognosis. And I refuse to accept the prognosis for, let's say, eight or nine of my diagnoses that the doctors tried to assign to me and tag to me. And instead of me just accepting this is, it is what it is. I caused all this damage. This is, this is my, uh, the price I pay for the lifestyle I lived. And just accepting that, that this is how it's going to be. It was the same kind of feeling each time, uh, each time I, I heard, no, I have a scheduling conflict. I let it go in that moment. And I just waited for each time for it to, to, to pop up from within and go, oh, this is a story that would be really great if Kelly joined me on. And I, it's time I would just go and put it back out there, understanding that it's possible she'll say no, but in my, within my heart, in my soul, I knew that, I knew that one time she was gonna say yes. And, and that's how I knew that my intentions were coming from the right space. It wasn't coming from ego. Like I need to land. It's kind of like the guys in the late night talk shows that they're all jockeying to see who could get the, you know, the, the guy who wins uh, the tennis match or the one, the woman who wins, you know, when Lady Gaga got uh, the, the, the best song of the year, the Emmy, whatever it was that she just won at the, the awards yeah. a couple of Sundays ago, it wasn't about that for me. And so, that's what it came down to. It was like, okay, so I have to believe 
I have to be willing to believe that, you know, I remember the last therapist that I saw said to me, the most profound thing, the only thing I, I clearly remember he said to me, and this is early on in my healing process, uh, the tail end of 2015, he said, you have to learn how to trust yourself. And I wasn't, let's say, healthy enough to really ask him, what does he mean by that? Because it would, I, I was on a hike the other day with Mary, and I said, you know, I, I, we talked about that. And I said it would be really interesting to go back to him today and ask him what he meant by that. Because it would be interesting to see if he and I were aligned as far as what he means by trusting myself. For me, trusting myself today means just that, is that if it's coming from the healthy space, trusting that I have to trust my intuition, the voice that comes from within, not the thinking that comes from my, my brain or my, my thinking, but just trusting in a voice that says, it feels right, it is right, even if it turns out that it doesn't turn out exactly as I want it to, behind that, behind that experience is another lesson in growth. What, well, the thing about it is, is, the, what's, is um, what your therapist meant was what you're doing right now, where it comes from your heart. It's transparent, it's authentic, it's real, it's honest. That's you, Jay. So what you're putting out into the world is that. And then the, 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 the universe comes back and brings you this woman who you wanted to, you know, do this with, and she says yes. The reason why she said yes is because you're real, you're authentic, you're honest, you've got a beautiful heart, you're a J. Thank you. She said yes because of who you are and then your mission. You know, I love being here because, dude, you're an amazing, amazing guy with a beautiful heart. Everything's authentic. You're open. You're like the wonder child who's out there looking with their eyes wide open, wanting to know more and more and more, and your heart's open. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that, dude? You know, so, the, the, the amazing thing about that statement is uh, I didn't want to be a part of that. Right. For 54 years of my life, I was so closed off and narrow minded with limited belief systems and living and suffering in internal pain. I was very closed, um, very guarded, a very false sense of external self and being. Uh, because if if anyone knew the truth, um, if they knew the truth about who I was, then who you uh, thought you were, the truth is right. where you are, who you are right now. Exactly. And we said yes. Exactly. You're opening up, and 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 then in the moment that that wonderful thing happens, the universe will say, "You don't have to struggle, dude. Be who you are." You, you Michael. Archangel Michael says, through our beingness comes our doing. Who I am being in my truth, on my authenticity, and my transparency of me comes what I'm going to be doing in the world, which is an expression of who I am being. So what you're doing is simply an expression of who you are being, and then comes the universe to show you that mirror. And then it's up to us, and the challenge for many of us is to allow that love in. Because it hits us, and I know it hits me, when that happens for me, when wonderful things happen for me, Robert Baker had a great tool to use. Jeff, the next time something wonderful happens for you, don't call anybody, don't do anything. Sit with it for an hour if you can. And then see what comes up when something amazing and wonderful happens. I used to, when something wonderful would happen to me, I'd call somebody right away. 
Therefore, I'm negating my personal experience with it, thus avoiding it. And I never knew that I was avoiding love, that I was avoiding wonderfulness because I never, my father never taught me that. My father taught me that just wait for the, the other, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but the other shoe's going to eventually drop. That's my conditioning. So, so then we avoid the wonderfulness, the joy, thinking that it's not going to last. That our nervous system is always used to drama and conflict and fighting and chasing after the next hit. For me, it was always chasing out. Yeah, I, got, I, just, I just got three wonderful photo shoots this morning. I haven't yet sat back and go, oh, wow. And the reason why all three, hey, dude, we, we love your work. We love what you're doing. And, and we want to work with you. I haven't had the time to sit and let that soak sink in. I'm going, where's the fourth? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just nailed it. That's That was me early in my career. It's like Fridays for me always tended – Fridays I found – Psychologically, a lot of people, a lot of guys in, in the sales, professional sales world would slow down and kick back. Oh, it's almost the weekend. And it checked out by noon. Fridays were always the, the best day of the week for me to close deals when I was when I was doing it, you know, because what would happen is is I get I'd land one and then I was like, wow. And then I'd I just I'd start to get real busy and st start to dig and then close the second one and sometimes close the third one. So I know exactly that feeling of we're chasing the next one rather than taking a moment, like you said, to just go inward and, and just allow ourselves to receive the gift of the emotions behind the success of it. Allow us to receive mom and dad saying, you're wonderful. You're fantastic. You're worthy. You're good enough. You're perfect enough. My, my parents couldn't do that for themselves, so they didn't know that. Most of our parents ha haven't been able to, to do that. And that's, that's, that's the underlying part in all of this. When some, so, so, you know, Archangel Michael says for this month is the beginning, the true real beginning of the depth of where am I allowing myself to receive love? which is why it's one of my biggest challenges and why I asked you those questions. The wonderfulness coming to us, am I allowing myself for 10 minutes or are we afraid that we're gonna lose it? Are we afraid or, or do we think in our heads, that's an illusion. I'm still gonna have to chase after the next 25 people. This is, this is an illusion right here. You mean they want to be on my show? Who am I? She's showing you who you are by saying, yes, I want to do this with you. Yeah. And then to let it land and let it be there. And for many of us, and, and why all the craziness in the world is happening, it's, is there's a lot of love out there. In Michael's message, he said, love is ever present. Are you available to receive it? Are you available to allow it to land? Are you, are you available to know that you're worthy to be loved because of who you are? So that, that's kind of why I just asked you those questions because this is one of my challenges as well, to see all the wonderful things. I mean, I could tell you all the way back when I, for six months, I was on Broadway shooting Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and documenting the whole thing. I look back, I never let myself receive that to actually say, oh my gosh, to stand on Broadway and look up and see my photos on the billboards. I never, I wasn't this was all the way back in 2009 and I never let it land. I didn't know how. Because I think, I, I think part of it is because you just, we just sub, maybe subconsciously don't think we're worthy of it. 
Yes. We just we just got lucky. You think like we just dismiss our own moment, and so yep. yeah. So the, it's about, it, it, yeah, it's like so in the moment, a, a wonderful tool to use. Like in that moment, give yourself time to see what comes up when something wonderful happens to us. We all know when something crappy is happening to us because most of us are used to that. You know, we've been modeled that by mom and dad. We, we watched mom and dad struggle to survive life. We looked at them and our, that model has been ingrained in our subconscious, in our minds. So we're, we're, we're all doing our best to, to heal that wounded little boy and that little wounded little girl inside of us. But most of us out there, we're on that process. We're in that process of healing. And then now can we shift it? And Michael asked us that for this month of March to shift it and to say, the, there are wonderful things happening in my life. There are wonderful people in my life. Am I allowing myself to receive that love? And then when the wonderful thing happens or that wonderful person comes along and says, yeah, dude, I want to be on your show because you're amazing, to stop and breathe and see what comes up. I'm not, what? You know, really? What? Or... What does she want from me? What is her angle here to get on my show? See, even if, even if that comes up, because that's part of the conditioning. Oh, uh, yeah, they just said yes. They, you know, they want to do a photo shoot with me. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you know, they want something from me. They don't really want to work with me. They don't really want to know me. They just want something from me. See if that pops up. So I think it's it's something to look at. Um, what comes up when all these wonderful people and wonderful things come in our life? And it's enough, and to just to to see what, see if that happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you I'm gonna take your hat your your hat and uh, I'm gonna put it on for a moment. Okay. So now we're gonna flip sides here, and I'm gonna ask you when you have that camera saddled around your your shoulders, strap and strapped in and you're on one of your photo shoots. Who shows up? Um, the nurturer, the lover, Beautiful. the person who cares about the other person on the side of, of the camera. Um, that's the person who shows up. Uh, the healer, that's the person who shows up. It's for is it me. Always it's, that, is it always that way? Yeah. It's always, it's always, it's been that way for a long time. It, it's, it's been that way for a very long time, but I didn't know it. Um, um, I had to have people like if they filmed the photo shoot with me to see how I'm um, nurturing the person I'm photographing. And even if it's the big, <laughs> it's, it's even if it's the biggest you know, I've photographed some pretty heavy duty people in this world and they've even said it to me of, of, of like, oh, wow, it's so loving what you do. You really, really care about me. Um, and I said, well, well, yeah, I do. And, and that's who shows up when I'm doing it. It's not, it's not an opportunity. Um, it's going to look good on, in, in, on my website if it's somebody who is amazing and whatever. But it's all for me about, um, about you know, nurturing and loving and caring because what I'm there to capture is that part of them, the essence of, of that person, to, to really – if they're using the photograph to present themselves to the world, then we, then I have to find that there. And then it's about nurturing. It's about caring. It's about, you know, just being in that space. I'm not bringing it out. It's there. So then yeah. it's about capturing it. And then yeah. nurturing 
it, setting up a, a wonderful nurturing environment to do that. So the person is like, I can trust. I can trust this dude. That's how, you know, so that's how I got on Broadway from Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard told the producer, you can, you can trust Jeff. It sounds to me like then your ego is pretty much in, intact or the vitals are checked because um, of how you just described who shows up. And um, it, 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 I wonder for you, is it, is it a constant managing of self, of ego? Each time you, you pick up another, let's say, big photo shoot, um, how much of a challenge is that for you to manage your ego? Or is it, is it a day-by-day -day challenge when it comes to getting work in, in, the, in the field of photography? Here's what happens. And it happens with no matter who I photograph. And it goes back to what we were just talking about. When something wonderful happens for us, what comes up? No matter who I'm photographing, no matter who it is, I, I get the gig. Oh, fantastic. We, we do all the logistics. We, all do, we do the 3D stuff, all the stuff that you have to do in the third dimension to, to make something like that happen. So the day comes that I'm doing the photo shoot. I hop in my car on my way, and you know what comes up? The deep wound of not good enough. It never goes away. It is there, it's pulsating through my body, my not good enough, the feelings of not good enough. And it's, it, I could be shooting on my way to shoot Sheryl Crow, or I can be on my way to shoot a brand new indie artist that nobody knows. It's the same not good enough. So it has nothing to do with what, what's happening in the 3D. It is the wound that comes up in me of not the feelings, the deep feelings of not good enough. <laughs> and, and, and I'm feeling that all the way. I'm feeling that when I get to the studio, wherever we're shooting, I'm feeling that all the time, that not good enough. And then um, it's why God made bathrooms. <laughs> so you go into the bathroom, you excuse yourself, you breathe and you do, you know, you Acknowledge I'm feeling not good enough. I'm feeling not good enough. And then when we begin and I pick up the camera because that brings me so much joy, the not good enough fades away. So the not good enough is an illusion. The joy isn't. The joy is real. The creation is real. The not good enough is my illusion based upon my childhood wounding from mom and dad. Mm. But but Jay, dude, it is palpable. <laughs> Thank you for, for sharing uh, your, your honest truth right here, right now. You know, this is Real Man, Real Talk Raw. And the invite, we're always open. The, the intention is to, to come in and be real and uh, sh share your vulnerability. And you just did that. And, and I, I love you for that, Jeff Fasano. Um, it means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. that uh, I don't have to show up by myself, you know? 99% of the time when a guest step into the studio with me, they step in and uh, I respect you for that and I thank you for that. Oh, uh, what I'd like to do is take a moment here to shift gears a little bit. Uh, believe it or not, we're, we're about 45 minutes coming up on 45 minutes into, the, into our, our conversation. I wanna just touch on a topic that, uh, hit me pretty hard. Just yesterday morning, I was surfing through, I, I pick up the feed to four or five different newspapers across the United States. And that's where I get my news today because I am plugged from TV. I, I no longer have a TV in my home. I, I pulled it out of the wall in 2015 and I never plugged it back. And I'm, it's good for me. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that, that decision. However, I, I, I pick and choose what articles I want to read. And, uh, and in, in particular, one that hit yesterday morning, it was in, in USA Today. And it was the only newspaper that I found that a particular article had picked up. 
and I don't even believe it was on the front page, but what the article was about was that uh, federal government data is showing that death from alcohol, drugs, and suicide, since they started um, taking, uh, really watching it and analyzing the data, it is at the highest all-time rate as of 2017. Now that's just, that's, they don't have data for 18 yet, which I'm sure it's going to be even a significantly, a significant jump from 17 to 18 because of the, the state of mind of, of our nation that we're in today. However, what it, here's the statistic that just absolutely struck me. Um, for every 100,000 people that die, 46.6% were uh, alcoholic, drug, or suicide-related deaths. That's almost, we're just approaching 50% of all deaths of within 100,000 people are from those three areas of um, choices. Because we choose to, we choose to uh, get hooked on alcohol, drugs, and suicide is a choice as well. And um, it just struck me, um, I read the article about two and a half times because I, I couldn't believe what I was reading was in fact accurate and I wasn't misinterpreting it. What are your thoughts on, on this topic and why, why do you think that is such an epidemic? We are at all time high. What's behind it all from your perspective and what do you think we need to do to fix this problem? The first thing that pops into my consciousness is um, I think many of us have stopped feeling. We're, we're bombarded by, by so many things and uh, we've stopped feeling. Uh, alcohol, I, I've done it, drugs, I've done it. All that was just to um, put a Band-Aid on the feelings, the deep feelings. Like I just said, my not good enough pulsates when I do a um, photo shoot. Well, I could run, you know, grab a couple of quick shots of Jameson that would calm me down, or I could use my tool of breathing and consciousness, say I'm feeling not good enough. Breathe, be in it, allow it. What brings me joy? Oh, you know, and use tools so we can begin to feel our feelings. And, um, and then desensitize to ourselves, the feelings. Um, beneath, you know, those feelings are simply, uh, are, is, it's energy and it's the energy based upon our wounds. I'm feeling not good enough. I'm feeling not perfect enough. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this. And then we turn to stuff that will allow us to repress and suppress those feelings. And then what happens from that, the next step after that, is because we're repressing and suppressing the feelings so deeply, then we start to indulge and sink into the feelings. And then all of that becomes the illusion of our world. And we get trapped into this isolation and this separation. And then we start to believe that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. And we move into that place and then we separate and isolate ourselves instead of opening our hearts, connecting with other people and know that we can feel. And we've moved into this place. I think the world right now is in such a huge state of avoidance. You know, all these devices and things that'll, where, where, where we avoid, we avoid what we're feeling. And then to reach out to people and say, I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling frightened. I'm feeling not good enough. I'm feeling this. I, I need some help. And then be willing for that help as opposed to drugs. I've done them. Drinking, I've done it. 
And uh, all I was doing was putting a Band-Aid over the deep wounds and feelings that I have within me. But, but the, and then the key to it is to move into our hearts and nurture. One of the things that, that is important for us to learn is how to nurture ourselves. We all are bombarded with a ton of information and a ton of concepts. All self-help people, this person, that person, this person, throwing tons and tons and tons of concepts at us and then giving us exercise to infuse the concepts in our life. Who are those out there that are saying, what do you feel? Like I asked you, Jay. So what do you feel? What are you feeling when this comes up? What are you feeling? Because that's the truth in the moment. My truth in this moment, because this happened to me, is that I'm feeling sad. That's my truth right now. My truth is I am feeling sad. So then what am I feeling? And then, now what do I need? I'm feeling sad right now. What do I need? You know what? I, I, I'm a little lost and this feeling of sadness it might be overwhelming me. I can open my heart and call Jay. And Jay could nurture me through this. And then what I'm doing in that moment is opening up to a place of intimacy through my transparency and authenticity to allow someone to help me. It begins with teaching self-love. It's about moving past the concepts and teaching people how to be, how to feel, how to nurture and know that they matter and that there's someone here who's going to listen because maybe mom and dad didn't. And I think this is what we all need to begin to do. We need to, we, we, we need to release the sugar coating of everything. We, used to, we need to release the mask. We need to release the veneer. We need, we need to come from behind the veil that we've created and show up and say, I'm here. This is who I am. I need some help. And then do that where, because with all of what you just talked about, there is so much self-judgment, so much self-shame, and so much self-loathing going on that because all of us have never, mom has never walked up to us really, or dad and said, you're amazing. I love you for who you are. Have I've never heard that. And probably most of the people who are ever gonna watch this have heard that. So we've got to learn how to do that for ourselves first, understand the concepts, but we've got to move to a place where we start to experience this stuff to really experience our feelings in an environment where it's nurturing and there's love. We, we learn a lot of concepts and those concepts remain in the mental body or the mind. Archangel Michael, who, who I channel for now, it's been about since, 2000, since 2002, is all about, about moving from our mind into our hearts. And that is where we live. That's where our truth is. That's where our authenticity is. And that is the nurturing environments that is important for us to set up so people can just breathe, let go, and be where they are and know that they're absolutely 100% loved for being there. We've got to move beyond the veneer of the conceptual inspirational workshops into the experiential workshops, the experiential environments that allow us to be and feel. And that is when we're going to grow the most. Thank you for sharing that, Jeff. Uh, you know, that's what, he, that's what I'm here to begin to do. And that's what I do when you ask me the question, what is my photo shoots life? My photo shoots are, are that. 
my groups that I do once a month here are that. Because that is my biggest challenge, is to show up and know that no matter what, no matter where I am, that Jay's still going to dig Jeff. That Jeff's going to still dig Jay because it's because we're all about love. Love is always there and it's ever present. You really honed in on it's the it's the lack of self love and uh, it's it's having to heal those wounds. I'd like to ask you, at least for me, what led me to first learning how to like myself and then falling in love with myself was something called self care. If I hadn't, I don't believe that if I hadn't done learned what self-care, healthy self-care could look like for me and begin to have those experiences, those breakthroughs of positive feelings behind the self-care and then making that showing up consistently day after day after day and doing a self-care, I don't know that I could have navigated to self-love. I'm not sure because... Uh, for me, it didn't. It, I only know one way it worked, which is I my gateway to self like and love was through self care. I'm curious from your perspective, um, how much has self care influenced your own healing journey, and what does self care look like for you today? I, I what pops right into to my consciousness is when I was with my friend Alexandra back in uh, I don't remember what it was 20 years ago, 1999, um, and uh, we were together and I said, um, there's something missing. There's something missing. And she said, I, I want to introduce you to my healer, Robert Baker. And I said, okay, I'm going to go. And once I met Robert, um, I said, this is, I, this is what I need to do. And in that moment, I was ex ex exercising unconsciously some self-love. Right in that moment, I was like, something's missing. And I need to reach out to somebody to help me find what I think is missing. And in that moment, I was really exercising some self-love, whether I knew it or not, by just showing up and saying, I need some help. Why? Because there's a part of me that does love myself. Um, that once again is a, a challenge for me each and every day. And I, it's one of those challenges that I have each and each and every day. And I have to catch myself when I'm beating myself up, when I'm judging myself and when I'm shaming myself. And then I've got to, to start to praise myself. Uh, Michael has an exercise called 14 days of praise, praising yourself every single day that will be self-nurturing. I try each and every day, and I know trying is not the best word. You, you, you know, we could always be trying. Each day I, I attempt and intend to do something nice for myself. Um, then ask myself the question, well, why am I doing that? And it's because I love myself. And um, because I think we're all wonderful at helping others. Um, well, it looks like, up uh, oh, here it comes. The, the thing that pops into, into my head right away is um, looking at your life, looking at where you are in your life right now. Um, 
try to do that um, within neutrality. Um, Michael's first message in my book, Journey of the Awakened Heart, is about asking the question, where am I? Where am I in my life right now? So you can ask yourself, if, if you're looking at your life right now and it doesn't resonate for you, there's parts of it that resonates for you, you know there's change, I need to change, I need to change, um, and you might not even know what that is, but you're feeling it in your heart space, is this stop and ask yourself, where am I right now? Breathe, where am I right now? And write down where you are in your life right now. And then come to that place in this foundation. This is where I am. And then write down what in my life right now resonates for me and what in my life right now doesn't resonate for me. And write, make those two lists. And then ask yourself, does my life resonate? Because it's all about feeling. It's all about resonating. It's not always about I need to do, 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 do. I need to be first. So be first. Be where you are. Look at your life. And then just build this foundation of what your life is right now. But be aware of what you're feeling. Feel, folks. Feel your feelings. Feel where you are. When you look at your life, how does it make you feel? And do you move to judgment and shame right away? Do you start judging yourself and judging yourself? And if you do, with self-love and self-nurturing, just say, you know where I'm at right now? I'm judging myself. This is called raising your awareness and consciousness of our behaviors. Wow, I am really beating the crap out of myself right now. What do I need? What am I feeling? That's where we can begin, and that's where change can begin by self-loving, honoring. I'm judging right now. I'm beating myself up right now. I'm feeling not worthy right now. Can I accept with compassion all of that and begin there? Thank you, Jeff. If uh, somebody wants to get hold of you and, and have a conversation with you and uh, – Learn more about what you do today. Uh, how can I get hold of you? Um, you can go to my website, journeyoftheawakenedheart.net. You can always contact me, um, email me if you'd like, at jeff at jefffasano.com. Um, yeah, join my mailing list. Uh, I put out a monthly, uh, a monthly message from Archangel Michael. I put out a weekly message from Archangel Michael. I do groups here in Nashville, and uh, if you want to look at my photo work, you can go to um, www.jefffasano.com, and that's with three Fs, jefffasano.com with three Fs. Thank you, Jeff. You know, Thank you, what, man. I, what I'd like to do is actually uh, give you a, a, put out a formal invite. Before the show, I think you said something, in fact, like, well, I'd really like to be able to hang out sometime, and you know, the only thing that stops us uh, is, is, is us. And so uh, here's your invite. You're welcome to come out here anytime, spend a couple of days, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's just sneak away for a weekend from Nashville, come in and I'll pick you up at the airport and uh, we'll just go spend some time. We'll deep dive in on some hiking trails. We'll do some extreme double diamond, uh, extremely difficult uh, rated trails. And we'll, we'll just kind of, sweat out some of the toxins and just deep dive into love and kindness together. How's that sound? Uh, you, I think you're on. There's, there's things brewing right now, some things brewing in Arizona for me. So let's make it happen. All right, man. You, you're amazing, dude. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. The next time you come on a show, obviously I'd like you to come back. I'd like to spend some time talking about your book. Uh, journey of the uh, awakened heart cool and uh, learn more about that and and what why that book was so important to you and perhaps we can just con continue the conversation right from this point moving forward it's uh, a step it's a step-by-step -step process of learning to love ourselves well and then we need to we need to get there so uh you're definitely uh we'll come back into the studio maybe maybe next month or two and uh, in the meantime, have yourself a, a beautiful balance of your day coming out of Nashville, Tennessee. Mr. Jeff Fasano, 
author and uh, world famous photographer and uh, man who is authentic and real and just shows up one day at a time. And with that, thank you for joining us live or on replay, Real Men, Real Talk, Raw. I got a show coming up. My next show is going to be this Saturday. And uh, it's going to be noon Mountain Time, 2 p.m. East Coast Time. My guest, her name is Rosalie, and she's going to be coming in from the Netherlands. And she self-healed from a rare form of cancer that was, uh, that was speaking about breathing, it was basically attacking her lungs and um, she was near death and was in big time trouble and she was in her early 20s. And today she has self-healed and she's gonna come into the studio and she's gonna share her story of how she um, healed her own mind, body and soul uh, due to the traumas that she understood had uh, impacted her life from, from her childhood. And today, you know, when she comes in, you're just going to see her smile. Her soul just radiates through her body. I had an amazing video chat with her yesterday. And uh, it was just, it's just so beautiful to meet people that understand the power of, of healing, whether it be mind, body, or soul, and that it's possible that we can have a life that is so much more rewarding and so much more peaceful. Inner peace is the peace I'm speaking about uh, when we just are willing to believe that it's possible. And with that, Jeff, thanks for joining me today. And uh, let's keep in touch, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jay. All right. Take care.